Good morning, this is Brent with Likens Motorsports. We are slowly making progress on some engines. Uh, I've been speaking with some other engine builders that I keep in frequent contact with, and I think we're all in the same boat that we just have a bunch of projects that are um, pretty stagnant right now, either because of machine work or because of parts. I know that's, I have, uh, I think about 14 uh, 14 or 15 engine builds right now that are pending and uh, just waiting on stuff to show up and uh, that's the that seems to be the the standard operating procedure for 2022 um, one of the engines that we are kind of close on finishing is this Ford 289 I've had a couple of videos on this one so far this is for our Shelby Cobra replica build and um, 289 block, 289 crank, got some scat rods and some uh, race tech pistons, factory 289 heads that have been ported, uh, the cast iron factory 289 intake that's also been ported, uh, one of my custom hydraulic rollers, and um, some niceties like some coated bearings, uh, which is pretty, pretty standard for for my builds, I try to incorporate uh, the little perks into each build, but um, we are slowly making progress. We did uh, receive the pistons in uh, a couple of days ago, so um, this crankshaft as well as the 427 medium riser crankshaft that I'm uh, working on is, they are both at the crank grinders right now because uh, the clearances were not correct. And um, I needed a little bit of material taken off. It is still up in the air as of this morning, whether or not I will get those back this week. So we are just, um, I, I try to stay busy. So whenever something comes in, I hop on it and, and try to get it done. But um, since we do have pistons and rings, I can um, do all the uh, preparatory work for, for when those arrive. Uh, such as measure all the pistons, weigh all the pistons, uh, check the cylinder to piston clearance, um, file fit the piston rings, and, and that sort of thing. So let me show you what, um, what pistons we have, and then we'll do a little bit of work on this 289. So, so we went to Race Tech for the pistons for this engine. It is not a typical 289 situation. I use some, some longer rods. Uh, and I typically do that sort of thing so the compression height changes so you can't use a typical 289 piston but uh, here's what we come back with and race tech just makes some quality parts and um, ample valve reliefs for some bigger valves and I think these are around an 8cc flat top um, set up for a 927 wrist pin diameter which a lot of the aftermarket rods use as well. Um, come with a set of wrist pins, obviously, and race tech either, usually either sends Hastings or total steel piston rings. We got Hastings with this one. This is a 15153 millimeter metric ring pack. Um, pretty much all of my builds are um, based around either that size or the one millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter ring pack sizes these days. Um, kind of gotten away from, well, for sure have gotten away from the old, you know, five sixty fourths rings. And, um, I haven't even used a 16th inch ring in a very long time, uh, especially with the three sixteenths oil ring pack. Um, uh, we're just, technology is moving ahead and, thinner ring, um, smaller ring dimensions is, is where the technology is. So I try to stay with that. But uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to unbox all eight of these little guys and um, get them measured up. Um, it's pretty um, standard procedure to uh, take a mic and double check all the measurements on the pistons. And um, this is for a 4060 bore size, so these should be around somewhere around the 4057 mark. And then once they're all measured up, 
um, I can get my dial bore gauge out and check the uh, piston to cylinder clearance. So we should be looking at somewhere around three to three and a half thousandths for that. Um, and then we'll move on to um, file fitting our, our piston rings. I, I never buy piston rings that are drop in. Um, too many variables on horsepower requirements and, and that sort of thing. So um, for, for a high performance street motor, I usually aim for uh, four and a half thousandths per inch of bore on the top ring and five thousandths per inch of bore on the second ring. And then um, make sure that your oil rails have sufficient clearance as well. So let's, uh, let's get all these pistons unboxed and we will move on. Okay, so this is the spec sheet that you get with, with pistons. Um, every piston manufacturer sends a spec sheet. Um, just depends on the manufacturer and what it looks like. One of the most important pieces of information that you get is this gauge point. So you, you measure pistons 90 degrees to the wrist pin. So you end up measuring across the skirt. Um, pistons are not straight up and down. Okay, so they have a... Uh, they have a very a lot of different shapes to them that uh, you can't really see with the naked eye, but um, they are tapered. So if I were to measure down at the bottom, down here uh, across the skirt, it's going to be different than up here at the top of the piston. Um, so they tell you where to measure, and each manufacturer will will give you a specific point. So they're saying the gauge point. Um, is from the bottom of the skirt up and um, I'm looking so gauge point point two inches so um, you measure from the bottom of the skirt up to um, 200 thousandths up from the bottom of the skirt and then take your mic and measure across those two points and get your measurement okay so we got that done and we got our octet of forged piston sitting here. Um, this is very typical of modern machine work. If you look through all the numbers, the smallest piston I have is 40569. The biggest one is 40571. There's literally just two ten thousandths of an inch spread between all eight pistons. And um, if, you're, if you're working with a machine shop who insists that you bring the pistons in so they can hone your block um, that'll probably maybe hint at how old of a machine shop it is because in uh, the past probably 20 30 years um, the <clears throat> the machining and manufacturing processes for making pistons has gotten a whole lot better um, it wasn't um, I guess it wasn't unusual to, to measure pistons, you know, a, a decade or two decades ago and see up to a thousandth of an inch difference on the diameter. So machinists were pretty leery about not having the pistons in hand when they honed the block. But um, nowadays, you don't have to worry about that. Um, literally, this is pretty uh, indicative of every set of pistons that I get from Diamond or Racetech or Male or whoever. Uh, very tight measurements. So um, I'm going to set my board gauge to um, to probably the fattest one, and um, I'll go through and check our cylinder to board clearances. That's pretty much um, uh, basically the same process as you would check a, a bearing clearance. So just mic mic your cylinder, and um, just remember if you don't have a cylinder head or a torque plate bolted on when you do that you will see a little bit of a discrepancy if the block had been bored and honed with torque plates as this one would so if you see a couple of tenths you know out around or out of taper or something like that then that's the uh that's probably the reason for it and that'll vary from engine block to engine block all right so when you check this we're checking for uh, clearance and we want to see three three and a half thousandths on that and um, it's about what we're seeing remember that when you don't have the torque plate 
bolted up that um, it, it will it will skew the dimensions a little bit but you want to make sure that you have ample clearance and I'll go through and check all eight but we're looking for <clears throat> usually for a 4032 piston you want somewhere it depends on manufacturer too but on these race techs they want about three three and a half thousandths clearance and um, if it's too tight then you will scuff up your skirts and scuff up your cylinders and if it's too loose um, it won't really hurt anything unless it's drastically loose but you may get some noise on cold startup it's called piston slap and um, that happens uh, usually on the on the race guys who um, who want to keep the same pistons but they you know keep honing their block out further and further and further but um, we're in good shape on this um, I've already checked it and um, we got that three three and a half thousandths clearance and it's on to uh, file fitting our piston rings all right so here's a, a cylinder's worth of piston rings uh, expander oil rails and first and second ring again these are one five one five got a chinese puzzle going on here one five one five three millimeter set up from hastings and as i mentioned uh, we usually run about uh, four and a half thousandths clearance for the top ring so that's going to put us at about 18 thousandths gap for the top ring and we run about five thousandths per inch of bore on the second ring so that's going to put us at 20 thousandths so i'm going to set our rings to 18 or 20. this varies from application to application the more horsepower you make the more heat you have in the cylinder the more ring gap that you need so that the ends will not butt together um engines that'll be lugged like a, a pulling situation towing situation um, forced induction nitrous oxide that sort of thing all will increase the gaps because of the the, the heat that's in the cylinder um, if the rings if the ring ends butt together it's uh it's pretty much all over for you so give yourself sufficient gap um this will also depend on certain piston manufacturers um, I don't use a lot of them anymore, but Keith Black has some hyper eutectic pistons where the top ring groove is very close to the top of the piston, so it sees more heat and therefore it needs more gap. So just some things to keep in mind there. Uh, I'm going to roll through. This is a very boring and uh, tedious procedure, so uh, I'm just going to go through all eight, check our gaps, adjust them, and um, clean the ends up. Um, I have a dressing wheel on my piston ring grinder that will take all the, the sharp edges off the ends. And then I come back with an Arkansas stone and make sure they're super smooth. But uh, we'll get that going. Okay, so when you dress your ends, you just want to just knock the sharp burrs off. You don't want to, um, I see some guys really lay on these things and that's just unnecessary. You don't need to do much more than just that right there um, when you square them up in the bores um, you just want to make sure that your gap is nice and straight and um, that you have a consistent gap all the way across the ring all right so we got all of our piston ring gaps checked and uh, all the burrs and everything filed off and i've got my block back upside down so that when the crank comes i can uh, already be a little bit of ahead of the game and get our main bearing clearances checked so i've got uh, one other thing that i would like to show you and uh, that'll probably wrap it up for for this weekend so let me uh let me take you outside all right so i'm currently in the bed of my truck this is a uh I've got two engine blocks here that I'm getting ready to drop off to the machinist. This is a BBM block. Uh, this is for our customers. A uh, real big cubic inch forced induction build. So I uh, got this block in yesterday. He sent it up to me. I'll get that to the machinist soon. And this is a service replacement 427 side oiler for 
the uh, 397 cubic inch tunnel port dyno mule. So was able to uh, to get this block and it looks, it's the first time I've laid eyes on it. So looks really, really good. And um, I think it'll serve the purpose well, but uh, everything looks to be in good shape. All right, so we're gonna wrap up this weekend's video. Um, anxious to get started on this 427 medium riser. It seems like it's been a long time and it has. Um, just keep having little minor setbacks, but um, that's, uh, that's what happens when you try to do things the correct way. So um, I'd rather uh, spend some time and do it right than, than have a major catastrophe. So that's where we are on that. But uh, thank you guys for, for staying with me this weekend. And um, hopefully we should be able to get moving. I know it seems like I've been saying that for the past couple of weeks, but hopefully we'll should be, we should be able to get moving on some builds pretty heavily in the next week. And uh, that's my goal anyway. If you haven't already, please take time to subscribe and punch that like button. If you like the content that you see, I should have many more Ford videos for you in the future. Y'all have a good weekend.